Today we're reviewing a new battery by Electric Car Parts. These are lithium iron phosphate batteries and they come in a variety of voltages and capacities. And both packs are in a steel enclosure similar to the SOK. They also have the same terminals as the SOK battery. And down here we have a communication port and a state of charge indicator. Now all of these batteries can be upgraded to the pro version and that will mean that it comes with the multi-pin socket or the communication port. This device can allow you to control heating or cooling elements or to alert you if the charge current is too high. So let's say these batteries are in a cabin and it gets too cold. You can actually use this communication port to trigger a heating element to keep the batteries at a specified temperature. So I only recommend the use of this pro version for advanced users only. For most people, just stick to the basic version. Next, both packs come with 150 amp BMS, and they're rated for 3000 cycles. But I have no idea what they look like inside, and they are from China, so we're going to take them apart and see how good the build quality is. These are nice screws. Oh, they have Loctite on them too, and lock nut washers, that's nice. This is nice. Holy cow, guys, I was not expecting it to look like this. Look at all of these conductors and the heat shrink on each one. The build quality is much nicer than I anticipated. We have two temperature sensor leads going out to the cells right here, and everything is glued and sealed, and it says 220 amps on the BMS. So they probably derated it to 150 amps, which is very good. And even the balance cable is glued in place. I cannot remove it. This is an A plus build quality right here. This is really nice. The BMS is not touching the cells, so you don't have to worry about that. And the thickness of the bus bars on the BMS are massive. It's absolute and total overkill on this. And on the bottom, we have the shunt for the capacity meter, and it has an integrated fuse. That's really nice. So not only does the BMS have overcurrent protection, but it also has a fuse. And there is shielding for all of these main conductors. And the main connections have marine grade heat shrink with adhesive and a hydraulic crimped connector. Also notice that the pin out connector for the pro version connects directly to the shunt. So the information that comes to this is only for controlling things that are external. It's not for controlling the BMS or the parameters. So very impressive so far, wow. And even the BMS connections have two lock nut washers on here. So the shunt connections are glued as well. How am I supposed to take this thing apart? The build quality is just too good. I guess I'm just gonna have to leave this hanging there. And this hole makes things difficult. If I were to remove this, I could hurt these leads. So we're gonna just remove this whole thing together. These are really nice screws, and each one still has a lock nut washer. Oh man, I don't want to hurt these connections. Everything is glued. There is not a single connection that is not glued on this battery. It's been a while since I've seen a battery this well designed. This is crazy. Honestly, when I saw the metal case, I thought it was going to be cheaper on the inside, but man, boy was I wrong. I was totally wrong. Whoops. Even the back of this thing has padding. Like, well designed. Holy cow! These are all brand new cells. Main negative, first cell, second cell, third cell, fourth cell. And then we have the main positive right here. These are some huge, very thick bus bars. And this is where the temperature sensor was connected to the battery, but I pulled it off. And there's even padding where the support arms touch the cells where the fiber board, so everything is well supported on here. This is not serviceable though. You could not rip these off. I mean, technically you could, but it's just not worth it. I think the only thing I could critique is that the overpressure valve is being covered by this foam. I think that you need to have this completely clear and free from any obstruction, but they're still able to vent. So yeah, wow, this is neat. And there's even separators between the cells. I can move it a little bit, but I don't think I want to. I really don't want to mess up the connections on these cells to the bus bars by pulling this thing out. And keep in mind, this is about 80 pounds of lithium iron phosphate. Also, do not open up the higher voltage one. When you charge a lithium iron phosphate 48 volt pack to its max state of charge, it's actually a high enough voltage to be unsafe. 
so do not try this at home. And these cells are 206 amp hours and they look identical to what's in the SOK 206 amp hour. And if you do the math with all eight of these cells, you get 5,273.6 watt hours. But they only advertise to 5,120 watt hours, which is very smart to do. So this should exceed its capacity rating. I have not had any of my batteries. I have some batteries that I haven't reviewed yet that I'm gonna review because I'm waiting on shipments but the cells are the same as these and they always pass my capacity test. So we're gonna capacity test this one because it will be faster. It would take like two days for me to capacity test this one. So we're gonna capacity test this one, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it will pass the test. These are really good cells, these are CATLs. So yeah, let's put this thing back together again. And B negative is marked, so I'm gonna put that, uh-oh, wait, which way does this go? Oh God, I think it goes this way. Yeah, let's let's follow the label. All right, B negative, we're gonna put it on the negative. I just realized that this is the positive and this is the negative. Gosh dang it. So yeah, overcurrent protection is on the negative. And so is the shunt. The shunt makes sense, but whenever I see a fuse, I always think it's connected to the higher potential, but not in this configuration. So you have two fuses on the negative, the overcurrent protection on the BMS and this large ANL fuse. I think this is the proper configuration. <laughs> I really hope so. Nice. So before we put it back together, let's test out the low temp charging protection. So here's our trusty power supply at 15 volts. So now we're charging, so let's add the temperature sensors to the frozen cold salt water. And we'll try just one temperature sensor first. And it works, so let's try the other temperature sensor, but first we need to heat this one up. Oh, and now it's working again. Now second temp sensor. And that one works too, so they both work. And let's heat it up again, and it starts charging again, cool. Now we just need to connect this cable and that's it. So yeah, I put this thing back together pretty quickly. That wasn't that hard. God, this thing's a beast, man. So now it's back together and there are no screws missing. Now we can do a capacity test with this one. So let's hook up a charger. Actually, you guys want to open this one up real quick? Let's see what's inside. version and the build quality looks the same we have the same shunt the same fuse same connections everything is the same it's just lacking the cable that comes with the pro version from the shunt and this is a 220 amp bms and the bms is mounted in a strategic fashion which is not touching the cells the connections look good we have heat shrink on everything so yeah let's put it back together again look at the attention to detail there's even soft padding on the inside of the cover where it touches the fiber board and these are 320 watt hour cells and there are eight cells in total which is 2560 and there's 2,560 on the sticker. So this one's derated, but this one has the same capacity that's on the label. So yeah, let's put this thing back together again. That's pretty cool. This is a tight fit on this one, man. You have to really bundle these cables properly to fit it in here. So yeah, this one passed the quality test too. And it says it's charging on the state of charge indicator. Let's see, oh look at that, it tells you 71 amps. And that matches my meter. It's off by 0.1 amps, but this is only accurate down to like one to 3%, so pretty good. Now let's charge with 140 amps and see what happens. Ooh, hot. That was hot. Oh, it's because the current was flowing through the steel. It wasn't touching the copper. And yes, this will not short circuit. I know what I'm doing. People still comment about that stuff. I'm like, come on guys, really? It's been a while. We're at 70 and 69, and it says 137 to 139 amps, which should be nothing for a 150 amp BMS. So you can do this all day long. So we'll come back in less than an hour, and it should be charged up all the way. All right, I hope it passed. 207 amp hours. Well, it's only one amp hour more than what it was advertised on the cell, but it's still more than what they advertised the pack to be, so that's really good and it has a perfect discharge curve. So these batteries passed my test, but should you actually buy it? 
And in this instance, you get what you pay for. So these are more expensive. This one costs about the equivalent of $100 less than a Battleborn. So it's cheaper than the higher tier batteries, but it's still very expensive. And let's compare the price of the 200 amp hour to an SOK battery that has the same exact cells. The SOK battery does not have a state of charge indicator, but this thing costs $600 more. And besides the state of charge indicator, I don't see many other special features. And the pro version with the multi-pin socket costs $150. And all it is, is a cable going from the shunt to an output connection. And personally, I'd rather use that $150 to build my own thermostatically controlled heating system or whatever else I need. And better yet, I could even add my own Victron smart shunt or their traditional shunt and control you know, heating pads and other things with that instead. So I think these are very expensive. They're very well built. I have to give them that. These are very high quality batteries, but they cost a pretty penny. And there is lots of competition nowadays. And considering the build quality is good, these might be a good consideration if you're trying to find a Battleborn alternative. But the Battleborn case is 100% sealed. This one is sealed really nicely, but this shunt display, I think this is the weakest part of this case. If these were like $100 more than an SOK, maybe even $200, I think people would buy these like crazy. But I still think that people are gonna stick to an SOK battery. You could just buy a bunch of SOK batteries buy your own fuse instead of having the convenient one that this comes with buy a Victron shunt or whatever shunt you want and you get all the features that this thing has and you still get the steel box and everything else that the SOK has but we need to consider that the SOK is serviceable and these are not so I mean that's up to you if you really need the serviceability as a feature but uh, yeah, I would probably go with SOK personally. But if you have the money and you really want good build quality, these are really nice. So this one's very expensive, but this one is quite a bit cheaper actually. So for a 48 volt, 100 amp hour of this model, you can get it for $2,430, which means it's the equivalent of $600 per 100 amp hour, 12 volt. A lot of people like to use like Battleborns and other 100 amp hour batteries to compare the price of lithium iron phosphate packs. So if you got a 48 volt non-pro version, 100 amp hour of this model, that's actually pretty cheap. That's as cheap as the smallest capacity SOK. But I think they should lower the cost of this one because that is excessive, $600 more than an SOK. But yeah, this one is quite a bit cheaper. I wonder if they're gonna change their prices. You guys should check the prices, all right? That's why I usually don't mention MSRP in my videos anymore. I'm doing it in this case because the price difference is quite significant. But yeah, prices change all the time. So if this video is older, I would click on the link and check the prices if they have dropped. But yeah, it's straightforward price comparison. You do usually get what you pay for though, and these do cost more and for good reason. But I would still not buy the pro version. 48 volt pack on this one without pro version, that seems like a good deal. You get a nice assortment of features for the price. And that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys liked the video and I will talk to you soon. Bye.